This is the Action Cast, the only podcast that fires it up, you Motor City motherfuckers. And now, our feature presentation. All right. That is, is the episode over? What happened? Did Joe get disconnected again? Joe, buddy. Hello, Joe. He's Hi, either. welcome to the Action Cast. He's yeah. probably not streaming, but I'm streaming on Twitch. I'm Eric Allen. I'm here with Alex Rio, Hello. Ethan Chang. It's me. And Bryce Wilson. Yes, I, like Eric Draven, have crawled my way out of the shallow grave <laughs> that, uh, that uh, grad school has left me in uh, to return to you this October. Uh-huh. You're going to take vengeance on your enemies. Yeah. Also, Dro- Joe Drilling will probably be here at some point. Um, it's means gonna the... be real awkward if, if he's not because he's the one that wanted to do this movie. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we are. This is the action cast, I guess I should say, because the archive that Joe had will be totally broken. Um, but <laughs> the only the only surviving totally artifact of this like... is my Twitch totally, stream. So totally broken, like the action cast. Yeah, yeah, it's a say. it's an apropos uh, metaphor for the action y'all, cast y'all itself. Know the drill. Yeah. Uh, we're not fooling you. If you're, if you're still around at this point, you know yeah. exactly what you're getting. So. Um, so anyway, it's Halloween month. It's not actually Halloween, but it's the month it of Halloween. So we like action movies. We like scary things. The Crow kind of dips its feet in both of those pools a little bit. It's kind of action, kind of, he's kind of like a slasher guy sometimes. It's, it's a little scary with the, the imagery or whatever. I don't know. Joe Joe's the one that wanted to watch this movie. I like this movie. Uh, Joe likes this movie. Uh, Alex, what are you going to be on the pro or the anti contingent this time? Uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not going to say that a lot of this movie's appeal isn't nostalgia, and it is, and like not not just nostalgia for like the film itself, but like also nostalgia for like that just terrible time in the late '90s and early 2000s when like. Ooh, a Halloween party would not be complete without some slightly too chubby guy to pull it off dressed up as the crow. Like just this, <laughs> there, there was a time when like this movie was like the culture and it like has this kind of, kind of like we said on the matrix podcast, it's kind of similar where it's like this underground comic and this movie and it's cult following and the soundtrack all were like little niches. And, you know, it seems so weird. Uh, now that there's like a, a, a niche culture for everything, but like there was a time when this qualified as niche culture uh, or cult culture, or whatever you want to talk about it. And like, I find that time capsule element of it just really ende- endearing. So, uh, so yeah. Joe, friend, you, Joe has risen from, a, from the grave. The grave as well. well I've, hey Joe. I've risen from my shitty home internet, so I'm just on my phone. Hey, hey Joe, okay. your, your internet can't go down all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, let's hope not. Um, it can sure pick like uh, the holiday episodes to decide when it is going to go down now. So I uh, hope uh, Eric's uh, Eric's at least a little stable. It's working. So, yeah, I did the intro. You know, I don't. If uh, somebody's feeling ambitious, we can put the music in there or something. I don't know. Uh, I might do that. We'll see. Um. Anyway, so yeah. What what did, what's what's your? I mean, the crow. It, it's weird that the crow gets billing as a cult movie to me because it was like a huge deal when it came out. It was the only reason I saw it, and it was it's like made almost a hundred million dollars, which means that it's like you know, like that's a hit, right? Yeah, um, and yeah. I think if any you know, of Brandon Lee had been alive, they would have made a bunch more of these. I mean, they, they did make a bunch, a bunch more, more of them, of them anyways, them, right? As it turns out, they, they, there, there were three of them, right? There are oh, they, they got four a and a Canadian TV them. show, and, and a Canadian TV and show, a Canadian oh, TV show. Yeah. and they basically yep. did the reverse community, so. Yeah, it, and they're all ever, except for the first one. They're all bad. Like if they're you don't like, if you bad. don't like the first one, oh boy, let me tell you about the sequels. Um, <laughs> the casts are like surprisingly not bad for a lot of those movies. Yeah, like Iggy uh, Pop is in the second one. Uh, Dennis and... Hopper's the bad guy in part five. At one time, wow. he refers to Satan as a big pimp daddy, uh, <laughs> like... along with one uh, Edward Furlong as, as the crow. I really, and, uh, I need to see Reed the... as the... and, 
and Danny Trejo. It's uh, arguably the nadir of the series. I thought you said there was like a good cast. Like, what's going on? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Yeah, 2006, Edward Furlong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Kirsten Dunst is in, she's in the Stairway to Heaven. I don't remember, they're all all really stupid names, too, um, which doesn't help. Was there, Um, there was a big, like, top 40, or maybe like top five or ten smash that was on the soundtrack to the second movie, right? Was it a Google Dolls song, maybe? Oh, probably. Mm, that sounds familiar. Are actually. you thinking, the, so the Google Dolls had a huge hit in the movie City of Angel, but that's a different <laughs> yes, thing. That's a different thing. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's definitely the, a different okay. thing. Yeah, those those are probably within two or three years of each other, though, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, that's the, I feel like yes, I registered absolutely. them both as movies. I, I didn't. I care definitely about. F- feel like a Google Dolls song would not have been completely out of place on a soundtrack to a Crow movie. Maybe not yeah, this yeah. movie, but one of the other ones so, certainly. So, um, um, actually, Joe, the Kirsten Dunst one is Crow Salvation. Uh, Wicked Prayer. Oh, is terribly the, sorry, I got that the, wrong. Is the uh, TV show with uh, is is the Canadian TV show. Uh, also, also starring in that is action cast action favorite William Atherton, uh, Fred Ward. I mean, I, uh, I and, do and like William Atherton. Fred and Ward, Ward. I mean, the yeah. the, uh, the immortal Eric Mabius <laughs> as the uh, oh, that's the right. In that one, so what was wasn't that supposed so to be his big like run, star break walk. or something? Yeah, right. Yeah, run away. Don't don't walk towards. I think is the. Uh, advice on that one i mean there's a there's a host of great character actors in this one as well there's mm-hmm. david patrick kelly from the, the all-time all-time yeah. one of the all-time greats honestly oh yeah i've John been watching Lino, who i'm always happy to see the next John lander Lino, uh, who, who makes the most out of, out of out of his role for sure next lander has so. been streaming the immortal fmv puzzle adventure game called the ripper which stars christopher walken and also has burgess meredith and uh <laughs> Mr. Kelly it plays a big role in that, and he's like the only one in the whole thing that like is any actual Rise. good at all. Well, yeah, well, because yeah, he's well, just—I mean, he's just doing like this character or the dude from Warriors or whatever. But uh, like, he can just tap into that apparently with no effort whatsoever, and just like be that amazing asshole whenever he wants to be. What, I feel like also the, Michael uh, Marco Rodriguez should be a name to the extent that somebody like. I don't know, David Patrick Kelly's a name or Danny Trejo's a name or John Polito. I love him in everything I see him in. I never remember his name. Uh, his face has looked identical for 30 years and he's he's great. Um, can we also give some props to, to Ernie Hudson? Uh, Absolutely. Playing, yeah. Um, yeah, David Patrick Kelly, uh, Tony Todd. Like this, this movie's got like a ton of great people. And here's one thing I would like to establish if we can. Why do people stop casting Michael Wincott? Because he still I, works and he's still good, and like he just always shows up in random places, so he's not dead or retired. Like I remember watching um, that uh, Terrence Malick film, Night of the Cups, and like he had like a two minute role as a movie executive. And, like fucking Terrence Malick remembers that Michael Wincock exists, so why does anyone else like? What, he what can't be cast on? anymore because he is a vampire, and they started shooting movies in sixty or one hundred twenty <laughs> frames a second. They need too much light, so he can't uh, he can retire. Uh, he can't do it. Yeah, um, that, like he he's great in this. He's great in. Mm. Um, no, he's he's super good in this. He's he's, he's got good hair in this. He, he has, have, he has good very hair. good hair. Yeah. He said, "Childhood ends the day you know you're gonna die." Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's chewing great. the scenery, but like, this yeah. is the kind of material that dictates that's what he should be yeah. doing. You, you uh, do not want small naturalistic performances in the fucking crow. I know, but yeah. I just he, uh, he doesn't just doesn't quite get there for me. And I think he, I think, I think that there is strange days. There's he's some some too. there's some people out there that could have done. I honestly think uh, Dave Patrick Kelly probably could have done a better job as the the big bad in this. I absolutely agree. Well, yeah. what's interesting is because he has the, more the, the energy comic, that I'm looking for. Yeah, in the comic, T Bird actually is the big bad, and Top Dollar gets sort of unceremoniously taken out in like the middle yeah. of the comic. Top and Top Dollar is a great name for a bad guy, though. That's true. It is. They have a whole what, what's the exact line? Jolly Pirate Club. Jolly Pirate, Jolly Pirate, Pirate, Pirate nicknames. nicknames. Yes, all the names in this. The Jolly Pirate nicknames. I just, great, so. I just want to 
check in and see if anybody's watching what's happening on the screen for this video. I can, I, I, I just, how can I, I want to see if you go to uh, twitch.tv slash on the stick, stick. you can check it out. I don't see it live anymore. Uh, It should be. I'm watching it. Are you are you what were you watching on YouTube? Because on YouTube it's not live anymore. Yeah, the no, YouTube no, no, stream no. is it's... dead. Um. Anyways, I this this game is really oh, I see really now. brutally oh, terrible. My God. Yeah. No, this oh, is good. God. It's like so. It's like a th- like pre rendered backgrounds, uh, like Resident Evil. It's um, Resident. It's a Resident Evil like brawler basically. Yeah, but it's, um, <laughs> it's just so poorly made. It's impossible to figure out where you are in the scene scripts around and. Whenever um, you swing the knife, your entire torso twists around like the Exorcist. Yeah. Also, like what you can just like kite the enemies around and they can't hit you, and it's like they can't f- line up their targets properly either. It's it's a it's kind of a mess. Anyways, it looks like WCW backstage <laughs> assault, and you're playing a Sting. Yeah, yeah, it could be that. All right. I wish I was playing that. <laughs> you'd be doing you'd be doing better for yourself if you yeah. were. So anyway, um, so yeah, the crow. You can switch over to that midway through and see if anyone. Dude, knows. your crow meter's blinking. Use your super. I don't oh, know. Gone. I don't know what that means. There's, I don't have the instruction manual. Also, when I kill a dude, a face falls out of him and then gets real small and floats away. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, as you just do, like in the right? movie. That's, yeah, just like just like God. in the movie. Yeah. I gotta yeah. make a joke that I was gonna make right before Joe dropped off the call, which is that uh, I think that this movie could be called uh, Gratuitous Shooting and Stabbing Westward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Ethan, what are, what are you, some kind of clown? Sometimes. Sometimes. Is I that think, a line yeah. from the movie? That's a line from Most the movie. Of that, was, that was when uh, Brandon Lee was acting. Uh, and it's I kind of a problem. I he's... I think you know some of the, some of the the emotional beats don't really work for him, but his like you look at this the movie posters and the kind of advertising for this, and you would assume that he's this sort of dour, gritty you know like Nolan Batman esque figure, but actually he's like he's I don't know that I'd go so far as to say he's Spider Man esque, but he definitely has some some japery. Uh, that he exchanges he's with like, the with the bad guys and stuff. He's not like this stone faced, yeah. like you know. He's moderately I Jokerified. It, it, I think I'd say it, it's, he's it's got the theater kid energy. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, no, it's, a, it's a it's a cliche, but I think no, he's, I think he's I think that undersells him, Ethan. I mean, I think he has like a genuine charisma, and even though it's like a complete cliche to say, like the camera does like love him. Like he looks good on film, and that's it's obvious true, yeah. who his dad is, and like. Yeah, I like we might not have been seeing like Oscar nominee Brandon Lee, but like I have no doubt that, you know, had he not been tragically killed, then he would have had a long career and yeah, I think would have done very well. I think think there's a lot of genuine talent there. So Yeah, he's he's definitely the problems the problems that I I have the problems that I have with this movie don't really have to do with him or his performance. I I thought he he is what he needs to be and uh, definitely would have enjoyed seeing him in some other action movies going forward. Um, yeah, I agree. He's, I mean, I don't think it's a good performance really, but it's, it's a, it's kind of a stilted performance in a, a Keanu Reeves way where it works. Right. You don't really want it to be different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and this he... is a, this is an arch fucking movie and I think it's appropriate for the, the tone that the film goes for. Yeah, I mean he's he's really not that far off from um his dad. Like it, Bruce Lee was not like a great actor either, you know. Definitely like not, you know? he he has a similar sort of just, you know, like well like like Bryce said like a kind of charisma to him. I mean we talked a little bit about this when we did um Showdown, Showdown in Little, Little Tokyo. Tokyo. I was going I was yeah. w- waiting to bring that up. I was kind of like Yeah. He has no he has no lines in this movie on the level of you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but a true classic you know, he, he does all right. Yeah, he, he does all right in the in this one. Um 
I think part of this movie's legacy, I mean, I, I guess we kind of have to talk about it. I guess we may as well do it now, right? He died during the making of this film. Someone loaded a, a gun with a bad blank. Well, so um, I I read the in the Wikipedia says that like they they had put some like actual like fake bullets that had actual heads in them yeah. that didn't have powder in them, and then right. somebody pulled the trigger and it pushed the bullet into the um, into the barrel into the barrel of the gun, and then when they put blanks into it and fired the blanks, the blanks had enough force to propel the the bullet out the of bullet the thing yeah. like it wasn't like it was actually a you know a gun being shot but it was like at close range it was more than enough to like people also, didn't I mean, it's, it sounded like realize... there were a lot of like safety checks that were like not done yeah too. so that was I mean, like since since i was a little kid i had heard sort of that well i guess first of all i think it's worth mentioning that i like i i remember this movie being kind of a cultural touchstone yeah when I was growing yes. up, but but it's odd to think about that I was 11 years old when this movie came out. I, w I don't think I would have been allowed to see this movie then. And what's stranger is I remember that this really wasn't, like in my mind, this movie is associated with Spawn in that both of them were things my <laughs> little brother really liked. Like my little brother had the Crow soundtrack and the Spawn soundtrack. Now, I'm I know a, a bunch of the... the fucking sand. This movie is way fucking better than Spawn. Well, I'm not, way, no, way I'm, fucking I'm not comparing Spawn. the movies by any means, but like the, I feel like they they appealed to Spawn soundtrack is actually good. I was yeah, just going to say there the there soundtrack. weren't yeah. there weren't very many soft shell zipper CD cases that didn't have copies of the Spawn soundtrack <laughs> right. and the so Crow soundtrack in like so 1998. Right? was genuinely ubiquitous. ubiquitous. Yeah, but like, but so so like I I've been trying to figure out whether like my mental images of this movie if they came, I don't think they came from 1994. If they came so, from when the sequel came out, or if it was from WCW, for, and I kind of went back. <laughs> like, for me, for me, it mine was definitely, definitely for wrestling. Yeah, well, for sure. My, <laughs> mine was uh, VHS, so I was probably 12 yeah. when I saw it in like '95. It came out on VHS, mm -hmm. and this is the kind of movie that my dad would have rented and we would have watched together when I was 12, okay. for sure. Oh, yeah, and I, I, I actually do have a vivid memory of like illicitly sneaking this movie because. Uh, for whatever reason, at like twelve or thirteen, I got like this one night to the house to myself with like a VHS player. I think my dad's like taking my siblings on a trip somewhere, and my mom had something to do. So I had one of the greatest triple features of my life, which started out as one of the worst, but it was um, Highlander Two, uh, the Quickening, <laughs> the not the non Renegade cut. Uh, the both cuts are fucking uh, shit. So God, it really... God, God of the Dead and uh, the Crow, all first time watches. And man, oh man, oh, nice. like 12, 12 year old Bryce, because that was like the greatest night of his life. At that point. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. This was also one of the tapes, like when I started buying my, when I started like using my allowance or whatever to buy VHS tapes of my own, this was one of the first tapes that I bought for sure. And the soundtrack I, I bought, you know, whatever, like this is you know and the comic and then i then i was like well now i had to read the comic and probably like 12 year old me shouldn't have been reading that comic uh you know well, but i did i was i still have it you know well it's it's just it's so funny to me like now that the, like the internet has um you know totally fractured culture and made like the ideas of cult and mainstream like pretty much uh completely meaningless i mean the number one show in the country is a murder show from Korea. So like, what does, what does cult mainstream even mean anymore? Um, right. But, uh, it's, it is, but it's also weird that like, like Joe say, like, this is just very much like a cult phenomenon and like, like, like a status signifier or like, it's not even like a subculture signifier and like was considered underground, but as it's been pointed out, it's a $30 million studio from, a fucking major, you know, studio that was released and made a hundred million dollars and then sold ten million copies of the CD. So don't ask me how that qualifies as like subcultural underground, but like the '90s were pretty shitty. Wait, what? What do you want? I mean, it was you know, I I, I asked. Like, I, I don't know if I'm outing her, but I asked Angela to to come tonight, and she couldn't because she's got grad school stuff going on, similar to you, Bryce. But uh, I, maybe I'm outing her by saying this. But when we were in college, she worked at a Hot Topic, which I felt <laughs> like made her the perfect person to be here uh, tonight. <laughs> because mm -hmm. uh, i think yeah, hot topic definitely. still sells a wide array of crow merchandise i, I think and i think that's point. that's appropriate because i like i think that i understand why people uh, attach this movie to the word cult 
but it's more like alt in the yes, 90s I meaning am. of the yeah. word alt where like all the most popular stuff was alt like alternative right. to what it was the alternative <laughs> it was the alternative to ago. the stuff that was popular like, in 1989 but by right, 1993 right. Which, which legitimately was no longer popular right like, yes but but that's like what it, it felt transgressive so that's why it was yeah. you know right that's the thing it felt trans and it definitely as a 12 year old 13 year old like my my letterboxd review of this movie said that all the kids who smoked clove cigarettes in the 90s loved this movie and all had the soundtrack too and all of those things are true of me um <laughs> i never had a poster but i i dated at least one girl who had the poster of him like sitting in the chair you guys know there's like a well-known poster yes, for this movie yeah. of Brandon Lee sitting in a chair with the, in the full makeup, like had, you know, had that. And actually one of my favorite uh, cure songs was written specifically for this movie uh, because the Robert Smith, is a fucking banger, dude. Like, the soundtrack, I love that Nine Inch Nails song that's playing like when he's like going along. The yeah. Nine, the Nine Inch Nails covering yeah. Joy Division, an original yeah. cure song, um, Pantera, non-album track, uh, like, a helmet song like eric was a saying helmet we song started. yeah like the good song on the soundtrack by the uh, uh rollins band covering <laughs> suicide like yeah that's pretty you cool. know that's just like it's just totally the violent femme milwaukee's own the violent femmes like it's just this, that's that you know, i could never if i never hear that thrill kill song ever again in my thrill entire kill life song. i will be yeah. extremely happy because i hate that song it's awful and it's awful I, I in love the that movie song. Also. i love that song and i love my life with thrill kill Cult, it's like so. it's like they un, like heard of the concept of distorted guitars but then didn't understand why guitar distortion was cool or sounded good <laughs> and then it just made it sound like the worst shittiest fucking sounding guitars of all time well apparently you uh, you, you may be then be happy to know that apparently buzz mccoy I fucking hated shooting his their scene in this movie because that actually is them playing in the club yes yeah um and he just apparently had a totally fucking miserable time when they had well to me, too, buzz. me too buzz me too so, <laughs> so. so i want to go back to something you almost started to touch on joe which i imagine is like the <laughs> the, the extreme controversy uh, oh yes uh, of right. of uh brandon lee's death and and right part of why I was thinking about like how old must I have been when, when I, I, this, when I knew this movie was in the consciousness is that uh, I, I feel like my understanding of maybe like the, the mysteriousness of surrounding his death. When I think about what I was told, it, it make, it, that does make me feel like it was 11 year old me being told this story that basically he was, he was uh, like that somebody rigged the prop to kill him because of some kind of family debts going back to his dad. Is that? Oh, I've never heard. Thing? I, I, never I heard definitely, that. I know what you're talking about. And I do remember hearing shit like I, that. I just heard that it was a curse. Right? The he, stuff, there was definitely, that, yeah. yeah, those were the two stories was that it was a curse and that like, no, it was like an assassination because like, man, like, I mean, maybe right. we, we should so say, talk I would, martial arts to white people, and someone's still pissed about it. So I would gonna... say <laughs> that it's a it was a conspiracy, a pre-internet conspiracy theory on the level of Tupac is still alive in Cuba. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's hanging like that with kind hanging of, with Elvis hanging and with... Amelia Earhart. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so yeah, I don't know if it was an assassination, but I think that we probably should at least touch on this, like. And God, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite here because God knows I've seen this movie like a dozen times. Um, and I think that were you able to ask him, we would probably have wanted it released. But this is probably the closest thing that Hollywood has released to a snuff film. Snuff film. Essentially. Yeah. Because it is like yeah. the entire movie is Brandon Lee being shot. Like that is almost like 80% of the runtime. And like, once again, I don't think the answer was to shelve the movie, but like you can't help but have a little squee of being uncomfortable because like even like infamous I, so, hollywood accidents like the twilight zone doesn't use footage of the helicopter crash like, no i don't think you know what uses dude, the dude. shot where he yeah. was killed though i know i think the don't. rumor i think there's a rumor that it does but i don't believe i don't think well i don't think that i don't think yeah I, I i would severely doubt that they use that footage in fact if anything i think i and once again like there's so much rumor around this movie and like rightfully so because once again it came at that perfect pre-internet time where the shit could grow, just grow but i ha i believe i remember hearing the rumor that like the footage was like mysteriously destroyed so like it didn't 
you know there was no chance that it could yeah yeah well Um, dude did you they were doing that for legal reasons or or whatever but did you watch the um the cursed films thing that shutter did last year uh no I, i i did not okay so just to get this out of the, like, I don't want to go on a thing about the Twilight Zone movie, but they did. There's an episode of that, like, it's like a, a five episode to call thing. John Landis a murderer, so you know. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing that that show did though that I was like not stoked about. Um, they show the footage and they don't like warn you, like, hey, we're about to show this. Like they just show it, and you're like, and you're like, I'm thinking like either this is like other footage of the helicopter. This is like a test take. Or they're gonna cut away. Oh my god, are they gonna cut away? Oh my oh my god, I just watched three people die. Like right. um yeah, so that was pretty fucked up. But uh if you want to see the footage of that, it is out there. This I've never seen, but I feel like I, I almost feel like like similar to Bruce Lee and you know, of course, like everybody's gonna talk about the parallels, but I think that there is something for for us as viewers and this is not to say like i'm glad he's dead because i'm definitely not but like we will never have to witness like the sad edward furlong-esque decline of brandon lee's career to to invoke somebody else who played the crow i mean and maybe it wouldn't happen maybe he'd be making like and maybe he would have you know played his dad with like shitty cg de-aging and once upon a time in hollywood instead of mike mo i who knows right but um i i feel like there's just like there is something to the the bruce lee and brandon lee dying with such minor filmographies that it's sort of like it, it protects their their legacy from being like stallone who or st- fucking steven yeah, seagal, seagal. There, yeah you know unfortunately more than bad movies to <laughs> yeah solely his legacy the, if he ever had one the problem is we didn't really get to the point where brandon lee made like a bunch of good movies he only made yeah. like three movies. He made three movies, and, and, and they're like, all one like... of them is like pretty good, and one is barely a movie, <laughs> right? I, so. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever actually seen Rapid Fire. I probably should watch that at some point, huh? But I've never, I don't think I've ever actually seen that. Wasn't I think there's I, one I other the one maybe poster, that they might I used to see it in the video store all the yeah, time. Yeah, you see, after this came out, it was like whoever owned the rights to it like pushed super hard on Rapid Fire after this movie came out. Um, but yeah, I used to also used to see the, the, po- I mean, I, again, I like this movie a lot. Um, and I think that showdown in little Tokyo, like has its charms. It's not a great movie for sure, but you know, I think that, um, Brandon Lee and Dolph Lundgren running around, you know, being super up awkward, the, the be- beating together. up the, uh, the Yakuza is like, you know, that's pretty fun. That's a pretty fun movie. Hey, do you guys remember um, the part in the crow where the crow used, uh, Link's master sword to kill guys. <laughs> well, Eric, this game is based on the sequel, and yeah. what you don't realize is that in maybe, fact, maybe that's he does. Yeah. yeah, that's that's canon. So I gotta say, <laughs> I this saw fucking this... sword. It's out of a different goddamn video game. Right. This the 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 sequel came out, and I definitely don't want. Also, to now I'm hitting Karnov with the master but... sword. As the... <laughs> this is like some Mugen shit. <laughs> The sequel came out uh, right on like my a friend of mine's birthday, and we went to see it in the theater for his birthday. And uh-huh. everybody, like all of us, were just like, "I'm sorry, this is like at that time it was probably the worst movie we'd ever seen." Like knowing in a theater, you know, like just bearing witness to the fucking train wreck that is the Crow City of Angels. Uh, which is probably actually better than the train wreck that is the Crow City of Angels, the video game for PlayStation. Um, it's a narrow Saturn. fucking thing there. <laughs> There's another it's cover there. of Joy Division on the City of Angels soundtrack, but this time it's by Bush. Oh, <laughs> which, that, 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 does that the, sums it up? It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have no memory of that. Which Joy Division song does Bush cover on the Sick and oh, I, soundtrack? Let me Let me go back to it. In a lonely place. <laughs> I don't. I cannot recall ever hearing that cover, but I definitely don't want to. I do. Um, I absolutely yeah. do. Yeah. So um, do we want to start going through the actual movie now? Yes. Or? Yes. We should. We should talk about the actual movie. So this is um, a, your your semi boilerplate revenge movie with the caveat that the protagonist is a ghost or a revenant or a zombie or whatever he is. A Wendigo. Um, 
<laughs> went to go. Yeah. That none of these fucking people have a chance against him at any right. point. Which I actually kind of like. So they find the movie finds a way to make there be a little more in terms of stakes than the comic. Like the comic, he's just ripping dudes apart from start to finish. Like that, all that shit at the end with like the crow having a weakness or whatever. Like, nah, that's none of that's in the comic. He just fucks people up for five issues or however long the original series was. And like, then it's a, then it's at the end and that's it, <laughs> you know? Um, the movie does a little bit more with that, but um, yeah. So we get some narration from a young girl who has gone on to have no career whatsoever. Basically she's been in like three more movies, like way after this one when she was an adult. Um, but she narrates that, you know, they used to say that uh, when people died, the crow carried their body to the, the next world. But, if you know shit was too bad then the crow would bring them back so they could set things right you know he's he's sam beckett uh but a ghost putting right what once went wrong um and so we kind of open on like a very we get the story of what happened to him in like kind of bits and pieces but one thing that I definitely like about this movie is it's about an hour and 45 minutes right and there's really not very much fat on it um it doesn't spend a lot of time fucking around like he he gets out of the grave pretty much right away uh and just is on a path for revenge i'm, I'm like, sure that we'll, we'll 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 talk about this but you know we'll probably talk a lot about like kind of like the overindulgence and the goth and like the kitsch and the camp but this movie does legitimately have just a strong visual imprint like it, re- it really is kind of pretty depressing where alex Croyce's career has gone because like both this and Dark, Dark City, City. clearly the work of like someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. Like those those opening shots, like of the of the aerial shots of like, Detroit with the done in miniature with the fires burning all of them. Like it's it is a striking film. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and it's, you know it's it's that wonderful kind of pre comic book era when no one knew what a comic book movie was supposed to look like. So like it was right. still interesting and experimenting and like playing jazz and uh, and yeah, I think this movie makes the most of that. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not sure I like... it's ever daytime in the entire movie. <laughs> it's it's never it daytime in the entire. I mean, it movie. could be, but it's always raining, so yeah, it can't, can't rain, rain all, all the time. time. <laughs> um, but it, it, it like, yeah, it, it it's dark all, the, and then of course that carries over into Dark City as well. Same same aesthetic where it literally is dark the whole time. <laughs> right, the movie well, the listen, does it does what it says on the tin, point. man. Yeah, right. But there's like I I rewatched I li- that movie I like a few that movie years ago. A yeah, I, like that I was surpri- I was like I'm not sure if this is gonna hold up, and I rewatched uh, it. And I was like I think I like it better now. Yeah, it's a really yeah, clever I construction. I think Dark City sure. absolutely holds up. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty fantastic little film. Yeah. Still hear me? No. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Joe? Okay. Hi. Hey. OBS just gave me a disconnection notice, so I was like, "Great, is it happening again?" But no, it seems like not. Anyways. Um, again. <laughs> but I lost track of Alex Proyas after he made fucking iRobot, and that was kind of where I was just like, okay, well, it was a good run. I, I robot, Alex, not, not great. <laughs> no, knowing, not great. Gods of Egypt, not great. Just, just oh, that's right. He did there. fucking knowing. Gods of Egypt. That was him. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, which one is Knowing? I think I confused that that's, with Mercury the, Rising. That's the Nicolas Cage one where he yeah. he finds out that the end of the world uh, is happening, and then. The kind of cool thing about I actually kind of like knowing in a way, but uh, spoiler <laughs> alert for a twelve-year-old movie that no one likes. Uh, the, the the cool thing is like there's just there it's like one of the most bleak films I think a mainstream uh, studio has ever released because the answer is that the universe is completely deterministic. There is no free world will, and the world is doomed to end. So at the end of the movie, the world does just end, and that's the end of, of the film. So. Uh, he, he truly just got to know, and that was it. Hmm. I'm kind of surprised that a Hollywood studio would release a movie like that. That seems... Especially one that isn't like... I mean, I wasn't surprised when they released The Mist because Frank Darabont had some cred, but something like Knowing just doesn't feel like yeah. the kind of movie that... Uh, you know, whatever. So, well, so... Ro- Roger yeah, Ebert infamously gave it four stars, and like that was the hill he died on, was like, Knowing is like fucking fantastic so fuck the rest of y'all so rest in peace Raj we miss you yeah 
Um, so after we get that very good, I mean, the part of this movie that is kind of charming now, but I still is like, this movie had a decent budget, but a lot of the effects are sort of like very early digital stuff. And it looks like shit. There's a lot of really bad compositing in this movie that looks really bad. And even though like when he gets shot, when he gets shot in the hand and looks through it and it's just like fake digital hand and completely, it looks like a guy holding a hand on a stick, holding a hand. Yes, absolutely. Yep. That. And when he's running on the rooftops and the nine inch nails cover of joy division is playing, there's a moment where he's like, it's clearly he's running on a green screen and they just move the set, you know, the move, the camera against the, the set uh, against him, which then cuts to like a shot of a really nice set of him, like jumping and catching that like male pole or whatever the hell it is and swinging onto another roof. And it's like, why didn't you shoot all this shit on the, like the, all the rooftop parkour shit. Like you, you had to get one shot in there of really bad compositing for some reason. And I just don't, it, I don't understand why it's there. Um, but even in that Vista of the, of like downtown Detroit or whatever, at the very beginning, there's a couple of the buildings is where it's like, uh, the compositing here is like not seamless. Let's just put it that way. But um, again, it's kind of, now it's kind of charming in its way, but it's just, it, it, it kind of feels like for a movie that costs a hundred million, did it, oh, sorry, did it cost a hundred million? It made a hundred million. million. It made a hundred million. It's like, like less million. than 30 of that's a lot for 1994 though i feel like right yeah. i mean but you know yeah. made four times it back so it's pretty good right right but some of that stuff kind of shows but um yeah i mean he's basically out of the grave right away and he's kind of confused when he crawls yeah. out of the grave as one would be if you were suddenly yeah that's like, that's totally reasonable from... mm-hmm. and again, i think this is all kind of stuff that you know he plays very well and uh Oh, that's one of the things that I kind of like about the the quote unquote mythology of this movie is is the fact that it never really gets defined like hard and fast what he can and can't do. Like I, I like that he's basically able to do what is required of him in the situation, but it has to be something that he kind of would want to do. Like he can suddenly cure someone of their heroin addiction. Like okay, Morphine. like Morphine, there's, please. there's almost like a uh, <laughs> like a, a and I know Joe hates this term, but like a magical realism feel to it to a certain extent, where it's just kind of it's whatever the situation requires him to do, he's able to do in a, in a certain way. I yeah I, I mean yes i don't like that term but yes you that is yeah I, I, right and and he the the whole big part of it is whatever he, he can see the memories of things and people that he touches and so when he touches his cat um that is still like hanging out in like the burned out shell of the loft where he used not to a, live he not gets a, a flashback to not a big fan of like 100 years of solitude or something what's no, it's no, it's not that I don't like things that are considered that. I just don't like that term because I think it's silly and kind of meaningless. Um, but you know, he, damn, dude, did you get a, can we get a, can we get a, uh, like an epilepsy warning on this game footage? It's like, it's like a strobe oh effect on, yeah, like what the hell? Um, so. <laughs> I thought you were going to go to, I, I, I assumed you were going to go to WCW versus the world, but, uh, well, I let me ask a question, Mr. Domino. Yeah. No one can stop the crow and no one can stop Mr. Domino. All right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, it, immortal killing this... machines, both. Okay. <laughs> Here's a full and comprehensive yeah. list of people who cannot be stopped. <laughs> Number one. The Terminator, the crow, Mr. Domino. Yeah. It's Super cop. Like it. He's the cop Although we don't know. Stopped. We don't know if Mr. Domino could be bargained with or reasoned with. Um, we just know that he cannot be stopped ever. Until I don't know who's dead, but he's coming after somebody. That's for Mr. Sure. Domino will rip your fucking heart out. <laughs> That's right. He'll reach down and <laughs> throw pull your fucking heart out. Um, so see, once other, other things that cannot be stopped. Uh, <laughs> The rock. You until you get rock. enough. Uh... <laughs> right, yeah. No, no, I can be stopped. You just shouldn't. Right. Don't uh... stop till you get enough. Right, also, right. since you I wasn't I was gonna save this until later, but since you just brought up Michael Jackson, uh yeah. James O'Barr likes to tell a story of being in a room with studio executives who proposed that they make this a musical and cast Michael Jackson in the lead role. 
I would watch, yeah, man. I would watch yeah, this. Yeah, let's that, go. Until certain, you know, shit came to light. But yeah. Uh, Maybe he yeah, could have gotten uh, so. David Lynch to direct it then. Like, the dangerous <laughs> promo. So. Uh huh. So uh, once he's out of the ground, the first thing he does is uh, he it's not clear how he finds Tintin, but I guess it's not really important. Um, also, I can never there's remember... some kind of like honing instinct going on here, you know. Yeah, I also to them or they to him. Or I can never them. remember that actor's name. Um, but he was also in Hackers like the same year. And he sort of is he he has one of those faces where like he plays a teenager in hackers and he plays a grown man in this and he kind of carries them both off in a way that shouldn't be possible, but this guy does it, and I just I wish I could remember his name. But um the interesting thing is that in the comic, like the look of Tintin in the movie is what T Bird looks like in the comic. Lawrence Mason. Some Lawrence Mason, yes. Um but for some reason in in the movie, they decided they were going to cast Lawrence Mason and make him look like the T-Bird of the comic, but have him be Tintin. I guess Tintin is kind of a nothing character in the book, uh, so that's probably why, but um, he, uh, he like, see, this is one of the things that I really love about this movie, is like, there's not as many action sequences as some movies we've talked about, more than others, but um, stuff like Tintin is this, you know, the badass knife guy, right? And he throws a knife and the crow catches it between his hands and then throws it back. And and just like shit like that, I think oh, is really the, um uh the fist of the north star like trick, yeah. Yeah, basically, right? And it's just like that stuff like that is is really fun. The way even the way like um I don't know who was the DP on this movie, but the way Proyas and whoever was the DP like shoot like the knife going end over end flying between them and stuff is, is a really a choice that I really like and, and that kind of stuff. So, and, and again, because Brandon Lee was an athlete, he looks like he has the reflexes for this stuff. He looks like he can pull it off. And that's like what I mean. Like, yeah, he might not have like been like world-class Shakespearean actor, Brandon Lee, but I think he had like enough physical command and like physical charisma that like he really could have had a career post this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so he, he sticks, uh, all of Tintin's blades and his organs in alphabetical order. We are later told and, uh, moves on to the pawn shop operated by John Polito's Gideon, who looks like, I feel like James O'Barr modeled Gideon in the comic on John Polito because he looks, there's no other actor you could have cast in that role. If you read the comic, like he is perfect. And, um, this is kind of the first scene where you see like he does some he talks to Tintin and does some stuff about like, you know, the the you, you raped my uh, fiance and you killed us both and blah, blah, blah. But um, he does some, the first bit of like fun stuff is is in this scene where he breaks into the pawn shop and, you know, he like he runs up to the counter and then like hangs from the ceiling and knocks the knocks John Polito in the head with a baseball bat and, you know. Uh, yeah, he. I, I gotta go ahead and just say that this is like just a wonderful full Polito performance because like yes. he just. Uh, I mean, John Polito, you know, his Johnny Casper in Miller's Crossing is just one of my favorite performances of all time. Um, the private detective in uh, Big Lebowski. <laughs> but like is, everything, you know, great, that everything. Land, like the yeah, like like just the way he is and the way he interacts with the other character, like right down to like the sad, pathetic like coke nail he has like grown. Yes. Like it's just like yep. just so you, you can just he he looks like he smells like old cold cuts and uh, <laughs> it's just perfect for the role. So mm-hmm. so well done, Mister Polito. <laughs> Yes. Said it was a full Polito performance. Is there such thing as like a not full Polito? I mean, he, performance? he was in uh, Stuart Little, so I'm assuming that he toned oh, okay. it back there a little bit. <laughs> Pulled it back a little bit for uh, Stuart Little. Yeah. Well, um, so he's told that he's going to. Homeward gonna... Bound 2, Luke. Whoa. Uh, he was in Blank Man. He, you know, not not all winners on the the Polito circuit, but uh, but who among us can say that you know, we have all winners? So, Remo Williams, the adventure continues. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. I didn't remember that he was in that, but yeah. Uh isn't he's in he's in Barton Fink. He's great in that. He's in um, Barton Fink. Yeah. He's in I think he's in almost every Coen Brothers movie until he died. Uh yeah. he's in a lot of them. He was he's a Coen great, Brothers great fan. The, uh, the man who uh man who wasn't there. So yeah. he was an Atlas Shrugged, Ethan, so Wow. Oh no. Uh, oh god. That was a thing. So yeah. Wasn't um wasn't John Hurt in or not John sorry, not John Hurt, William Hurt. Wasn't William Hurt in that movie? Possibly. It's fucking I, not for his sake, huh? <laughs> sometimes you do it you sometimes you do a movie. Sometimes you, you got Jack to get Alex. paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um for his like artistic integrity, um uh, or something. Sure. I mean look, man, he, he got nominated for Best Supporting Actor for like five minutes in a Cronenberg movie, so you know, I think he's he gets a little bit of leeway. <laughs> on some stuff i don't know um but so after destroying the pawn shop the crow moves along to uh i like the uh the uh wedding rings in the uh shotgun trick i think that's yes. a neat little clever moment and again shot really well with him you know st- standing outside the pawn shop and they the camera catches the full blast of all the wedding or the engagement rings coming out of the barrel of the shotgun, uh, which then ignites the gasoline and blows up the pawn shop, um, which then brings out uh, Ernie Hudson, who we've seen already at this point, but now this is his first interaction with, with our hero. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a fun line of, uh, I say I'm dead and I move, uh, you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. The cop, Ernie Hudson's cop, uh, Officer Albrecht, refers to him as a mime from hell, but hey, at least he didn't do that walking against the wind shit. Uh, uh, I, I gotta say, one, one line in this script that I hate is uh, the when the, the the first scene when the asshole police lieutenant asks Ernie Hudson who he, who the victim is, and he says, Amelia Earhart, we found her. And it's like that, that's kind of like the kind of non-joke, non-joke writing that kind of characterizes the worst of uh like 90s script writing like obviously some coke addict executive was like we need a punchy line like right there for some reason and they just put in some bullshit well, instead of a normal line and uh, this was a miramax movie so yeah. two guesses who the, yeah, the coked up executive was it was one of them, it was one of them. uh so it, yeah it i mean there's there's a little bit of that here but like all I mean, most action movies in general have that. And as you said, it's kind of a hallmark of 90s, uh, you know. Um, But, you know, he disappears. He does the Batman thing where people turn around and he just vanishes. But, you know, he's a ghost. So at least it makes sense when he does it. And kind of now, like, he he starts with Tintin and then takes kind of a minute. But after that, it's kind of like he's whenever we see him it's sort of in the act of like murdering someone i think part of what i like about this movie is he's basically jason Voorhees, but like (laughs) for criminals Mm -hmm. but right for but for the people who killed him and raped his fiance and killed her too right so it's now now joe you do get to see him jamming out on a sick electric guitar and busting six solos i mean that's true that scene's in daylight isn't it so. It's like sunset. It's dusky uh, in that, that scene. Yeah. Um, also, I think shot that way to hide the fact that it's not him because he was probably dead by the time they shot that. So there are a couple scenes where it's very clearly not like even the, the first scene where he, you know, takes on the persona of being the crow and the cure song plays and he's he's putting the face paint on. And then he walks to the window that he was thrown out of and there's a lightning flash and you can tell that they just took a still frame of his face and pasted it on a stunt man uh, or stand in or whatever, probably his stunt. I think it was his stunt man um, that, that did this, the rest of the stuff and then just like pasted it over um, in post. And I guess that's fine, but it's really, really obvious in the way that some of the other, you know, compositing stuff is really, really obvious. So, um, but yeah, and after this, like he's he's a murder machine. Um, he's he's popping up like Jason Voorhees to to he's, kill some uh, gang members in he's Detroit. Not wasting any time. Yeah, he's really not wasting any time. How does Mister Domino have a skeleton? I need this explained to me. 
I mean, he's a domino. How how else is he gonna have you know the musculature to move around and stuff? Well, I, I assumed mean, he was like an insect and had an exoskeleton that was made of domino. That was bones my assumption. is another is another word for dominoes. That is true. Well, it's also also dice, right? Roll roll the roll the bones. I was gonna say Whatever. roll the roll the dominoes. Famous <laughs> phrase. <laughs> but uh, so he. Who's who's next on the list? It's Fun Boy, because oh, you find yeah, Fun Boy is a whole Jolly Pirate Club with their Jolly Pirate nicknames. Yep. And sort of in the background of his murder spree is the cop trying to figure out what's going on, which actually doesn't last long. The cop puts it together pretty quickly, mostly because he shows up at his apartment and is like the rare competent yeah. police officer, right? <laughs> Who's like figures out that a ghost man is. Uh, out getting revenge. Correct the case. And there's like not not much gymnastics mentally that he has to do to just be okay with that. Yeah, I mean it's some you know I, I there are movies that I appreciate that do an efficient thing with that. In fact, another movie I thought about suggesting for this was from Dust Till Dawn, which is also kind of a horror action thing. Yeah. And like, it, hey, they you know what we should have done? I realized okay. today, like an Wax hour work. before we started. <laughs> No, although that's also true. <laughs> have we ever done Blade? No, I thought about no. suggesting that too. We haven't. Done How Blade. the fuck have we never done Blade, and especially Blade Two? What the fuck is wrong with all of us? We're all fucking stupid and deserve to die. I mean, there's I a new Blade coming out, so we would have an excuse <laughs> to do Blade soon, theoretically. So I would. Uh, yeah, I, haven't, new, I think I've only Blade? seen one of those. And yeah, Ma Mahershala Ali is playing Blade in the MCU. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but, you know, in, in From Dust Till Dawn, the moment where they, they fight the first group of vampires, and then Clooney just says, like, I don't want to hear anybody say I don't believe in vampires because I don't believe in vampires, but what I saw was fucking vampires. And, like, that's just it. Like, they're just in. And it's the same thing in this movie. It's like, yeah, whatever. He's a resurrected ghost man who's killing gangsters. Fucking go with it. Whatever. You know? Um, I don't think it's especially interesting in these kind of movies to watch the characters like struggle with the reality of those things. I agree. Um, it, so it, it shouldn't take longer for the characters to establish suspension of disbelief than it takes for your audience to establish yeah. suspension of disbelief. So, right, right. So he uh, he he gets after Fun Boy right quick, and. Um, he tells a really good joke uh, while he's <laughs> with Fun Boy, um, and uh, which is also directly pulled from the comic book. Um, and then, like the whole thing with with Sarah and Darla, like that is all way expanded. For, they're, they're actually both like super minor characters in the comic, and he doesn't know the little girl who actually her name is Sherry and not not Sarah in the comic. He doesn't know her until he goes to kill fun boy Isn't that a uh, william's See, daughter right and he gets gotta, the big arm gotta, <laughs> what are we talking gotta, about <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta humanize the murderous crow ghost man you know, you know? that's right that's right so, I, mean, um, I think like once, once again like as as brandon leads not like i'm uh the call least, we're gonna have to surprised. switch calls because google only lets us do like an hour so uh get ready to drop for a second and i'll send a new link so right. get Seriously? stoked for that Get yeah, it's fucking. Uh, this is why I I like using Discord, but it doesn't work for everybody. So, part two is going to be better than. Well, now it's just me. So, hey everybody, how you doing out there in Streamland? Enjoying? Uh, no one can stop Mr. Domino. Are you enjoying then talking about the crow? I don't like the crow that much. I don't think it's very good. It's a little fun sometimes, but it's kind of lacking some of the stuff, like the, the meat on the bones that I need. Also, I, we'll, I'll talk about it with the rest of the group in a little bit, but um, I think it's kind of silly that he just like, like you know he's going to win. He's never really in any danger, so there's no never really much tension in the movie, um, which that's kind of a big problem for me. Also, like, Goss, pfft, whatever, lame. Lame. Let's see if I can find a...
shows new link here. All right, there's Eric. Now we're properly streaming again, so we can talk. We can go back to the movie. Um, so, it like, uh, well, I don't even remember what we were. We were talking about Fun Boy, and and the yeah, Sherry's a minor character. Darla's not even. I don't think Darla even has a name in the comic. I think she's just Sherry's mom. Yeah, I'll I'll just say that you know. Does I, she, I think does she that, got it going on? <laughs> yes. I think that uh, that Lee and the kid do have like kind of a sweet chemistry together, and uh, yeah, all once once again, I it it just you can call it a cheap ad if you want, but I do think it like adds a little something to the the film that was probably that would be lacking otherwise. Yeah, yeah. It can't, it can't literally just be a trail of murder as much as you know you would like that sometimes. I mean. I feel like at this time, the, the Hollywood theory was that, you know, it definitely couldn't just be a trail of murder. But I feel like in a in a post-raid world, it, it probably raid? could just be a trailer of it probably could just be a trailer of murder, uh, trail of murder. Right. And like people might be on board for that. This movie is so I don't I, I don't I don't mean to break too much from the uh, sort of play by play here. But this is the this is a movie that there has been a million attempts to remake this movie and everyone sounds worse than at one point like bradley cooper was going to play the role of eric in a remake of oh there's movie. some for, good like mock-ups of that they were, yeah there yeah there are there are yeah they, well, yeah, 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 yeah jason yeah, momoa that. and i think that actually could have been interesting too kind oh, of a so that was like happening to uh yeah. to uh lee i, think I mean it, it was weaknesses. happening but yeah the last i mean i feel like we used to i feel like the talk of crow remakes is so old that we used to talk about it on the show like back when right yeah the last uh the last news update i can find is from joe blow in uh august 4th of this year and the the headline is the crow the- reboot director thinks this film will still happen joe blow so- the colin <laughs> quinn character from saturday night live yeah, that's it. Sure. Wasn't that a? Well, I, I think I think this is just one of those things that we can we can say that uh, it's easy to uh, kind of minimize this movie, and we've all been doing it to like one extent or the other, and just be like, oh yeah, it's a simple story. Like, how do you fuck it up? Well, they have fucked it up several <laughs> times. Four times. Now. Like, yeah. So it, it's let's 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 give it a little credit where it's due. The, this movie does not fuck it up. So you know, congratulations on your on your non fucking it upness. So yeah, I guess for sure. <laughs> what do you have to say about this movie? It doesn't fuck it up. Yeah, it does. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, like I said, I I genuinely really enjoy this movie. I'm not gonna say that it's. I can't. I cannot discount that. You know, nostalgia plays a role in that. But I, I mean, I've watched a lot of movies from when I was 12 years old and been like, huh, this is dog shit. And I watched this last night, and that was not... I did not come away from this movie being like, oh, this sucks now. Um, yeah, I still have a fun time watching this movie. For, you know. For sure. Yeah. So, I don't know... I think in the right hands, a, a new version of this could work. Yeah. I just, like... Ah... Uh, no? I mean, I'm, I'm just... I'm doubtful about it, just because... Uh, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? I don't. Yeah, I don't know anything really, about. Do we really need it? Like, I mean, it'll just be a version of the crow without the sweet ninety style. So. Well, I mean, need it? Did we need another dread movie? No, but it fucking kicked ass. So, like, I'm glad we got it. You know. I mean, the other one was really bad. So. That's true. Arguably, it was. Yeah, we we did need it. I guess. <laughs> well, by that rationale, there's three really bad other crow movies and one really <laughs> bad TV series. So we do need a new one. I don't know. To, have, did you watch the TV right, series? Right. Uh, I believe I saw like an episode or two when it was new um, and was not not blown away, <laughs> at least not in a good way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, to get this slightly back on track, uh, the the let's see we have so fun boy gets killed he gets a crown of thorns carved into his chest and a bunch of uh, morphine needles stuck directly into his heart uh wow. he did not survive that so um 
and then I can never remember, like, so, there are a lot of characters in this movie that their name is never said, or it's only said once. And the, like, the right hand, t- top dollar's right hand man, um, he, the character has a name, but I can never remember what the hell it is. But he, like, bursts into the door right as the crow is jumping out the window, and he, like, winks at him and shushes, and then, like, dives out the window. Um, and that, that, actor and that role are also like pretty fun in this uh in this movie and actually by now we've already met top dollar because he's killed uh we kind of glossed over that he killed gideon uh and again i think michael wincott is just having a great time in this role he's he's not like raul julian street fighter or kenneth or um frank langella in uh masters of the universe level this is also a better movie than either of those movies, but he's like, he's kind of doing that thing. And I am totally on board. I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's a Some really scenery fun is definitely getting chewed here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, also he's boning his half sister. It seems like, um, which is, you know, that's novel, I guess. Um, but uh, he's sending his his henchmen to go kind of look into this uh, while getting the sense that T-Bird's, you know, crew is uh, who's being hunted down here. And uh, we did actually also skip over one of my favorite uh, David Patrick Kelly lines in this movie, which is one of my crew got himself perished. <laughs> <laughs> which is just a lovely moment from i mean I, like we said he's such a great character actor uh, in, you know uh, well, what, one thing i'll say is that i uh about t bird's crew is that i know for a fact that it's not richard edson but i i can never convince my brain that it's not richard edson as the uh whatever his name is the, the final guy who made stank stank yeah so uh it is a it is a Richard Edson reskin essentially, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm always just like I always remember that as Richard Edson until it's pointed out to me that it's not, and I'm like, ah, oh, must be Richard Edson. So, yeah, there was I feel like we did a movie not that long ago where I was like, I always think it's this actor and it's not, and then everybody was like, that's ridiculous. He doesn't look anything like that actor. I was like, well, look, man, that's just the way it is in my brain, okay? Until I watched the movie again, and I'm like, all right, it's not him, but I always think it's him. And now I can't remember which movie I'm even talking about, so we'll just move on. Uh, so I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of dalliances in between each each murder, but they're not they don't kill the pace for me. And also, the movie would be like 40 minutes long if he just killed all of them in succession. Right, because there is like literally like once again no, nothing that any of these people can can do to him. Uh, I think that was like the outlaw Burns big complaint about this movie, and I, I kind of see it, but. It was also like my main complaint such... while you guys were not on the stream was just that <laughs> th- th- like because he's like going to win and there's never really a- there's never really any tension in the movie. And so it kind of I, I can understand that. But I think like the ending does bring in some tension. And then um, yeah. like, like it's a term that gets thrown around a lot. But like this is a this is a power fantasy for sad boys is essentially what it is. It's like <laughs> it's like what if you had this like awesome girlfriend and then like you got to be tragic as well and then you could kill everyone who was ever like you got to be you. tragic like, as well like yeah and then and you you look like you look less and like you uh, could pull off an all black like wardrobe and you could shred the fucking guitar uh and uh you know no one made fun of you for like putting on guy lantern and makeup and like you just like fucking rocked this goth world and um and so that's like kind of why i'm more or less okay with the most of the action scenes we'll talk about the big exception later but being just basically murder scenes where yeah. he comes and quotes things that the the uh his victims would have no frame of reference for and then kills them and that's just kind of the, the repeated beat i mean for, it, for it, each one of these scenes so. it really is an inverted slasher movie right like he, yeah. he like no. you can't you cannot do anything to stop jason Voorhees until someone figures out how to do something to stop jason Voorhees, um or freddy or whatever and it's the same idea like if the bad guys have to figure out how to stop the crow which of course ironically similar to the uh, modern batman or the first batman movie anyway the first nolan batman yeah. movie was like that yeah, kind of. 
Uh, I don't know if I'd go quite that. And when you're playing uh, the Batman video games, it's also kind of like that. <laughs> the the modern ones, at least, yeah. Um, what I couldn't figure out in this movie is what do they actually figure out? Is it just, I mean, that woman, I, as far as I could tell, there's an Asian woman, and because she's Asian and therefore mysterious, uh, she she can figure out his secrets because uh, Asian people know secrets, maybe? Well, she is apparently half Asian, so that tells me that, you should, that Ethan, you should also be tapped into this. Uh, I mean, I know secrets, but only half of them, so. Well, but she's also only half, because remember, she's his half-sister or whatever. Oh, yeah. Ha- the same well, dad. He, he, so. he looks like he could be like a quarter Asian or something. Okay, well, fair enough. He's like right, a three, so... five sixteenths, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. All right. No, well, fair enough. Uh, so that's it has to be more than 50 50 straight down the line, is what you're telling you me. You must be this yes. Asian to know secrets about the crow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just sort of implied that she's into some kind of obscure, never specified Asian mysticism, which I can't decide if that's more or less offensive. I mean, it's <laughs> never, it's never like... even it's <laughs> never even mentioned it with one sentence. Like, right. We just take you just see her cutting out eyes from the start. So you know. Yeah, she's 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 cutting out ladies' eyeballs from the beginning and talking about the power they have. So who who fucking knows, really? Um, I mean, that's just like normal. Though. I mean, for all we know, she's just pulling stuff out of her ass. She's like, yeah, just to fucking kill the bird. That'll probably work. <laughs> and she also doesn't kill the bird. She holds the bird. Well, because she's makes... gonna like. So in the sequel, in the shitty sequel, the bad guy drinks the blood of the crow and gets its power, and then he's immortal. For like five minutes until something super dumb. I think like a, a flock of other crows then like fly through him and take the crow power back because he shouldn't have it because he's alive or some dumb shit. Sequel's really fucking bad. Also, the se- like this movie has a very cold color palette, a very almost black and white. And apparently, uh, Proyas wanted to shoot it in black and white, but the studio was like, "Hell no, you can't do that." Um, but the sequel, everything is like sort of shit slash rust colored. Like the movie has this, you know, like when you're dehydrated to... piss color. I wouldn't have thought of that, but palette. you're exactly right. That's exactly what that movie looks like. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's it, it looks really bad, and it is really bad. But I I mean, yeah. Basically, it's just like the crow is his his uh, connection. And so if you kill the crow or injure the crow, then you can injure him. And again, that's not in the comic at all like yeah he's just invincible in the whole thing he kills them all and then he goes back to his grave the end of the comic in the the comic must be he doesn't like kill that guy that fast like how do they justify sequels to this movie it's It's a different guy oh right you're right right. so in the comic the the different stories they're different guys yeah the only james obar i think only did another one and it was kind of recent and it was like I only read like the first issue, but if I remember correctly, it takes place in like a concentration camp during World War II. Great. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. That and sounds so... like something comic books would do. Yeah. Especially um, late nineties comic books. No, no, this was more this recent. Was than recent. That. Oh, this was recent. Oh, yeah. I'm but I think he made so much money off of this first book. So also this is like so we talked about like, well, it's like a, 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 a teenage mutant ninja turtle situation, right? Where it's right, right around, so. right? Yes, right. But uh, like Bryce was saying, like this movie makes you get to be tragic and you get to be the you know the the, the sad boy power fantasy or whatever. But like, apparently this book was written by him because he had a girlfriend or fiance or, or wife or whatever she was. They got killed in a car accident by a drunk driver. And like this was his like, this was him working through that, basically. Um, fiance apparently it was his fiance was killed by a drunk driver, and so he like worked through it by writing this story about this invincible guy who gets revenge on the people who killed his fiance. So, um, so but yeah, he he's this straight like thugs or whatever the bad guys in this movie are in the nineties are drunk drivers. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I knew that. I I assumed <laughs> that the whole time. I just don't want to clarify for the people who didn't get it. Yeah. Right. Uh. So he. I mean, it's he deep man. He did a bunch of other stuff, but I don't think he did very many other crow books. And 
uh, when let's see, the crow, what was it called? It was like the crow dead time. Was that was that it? Uh, I don't know. You're asking the wrong fellow. Yeah, Good I don't know. What, I can't remember what it was called, but he it was like the first one that he'd actually written and done the art for in a long time, and it was it's a Holocaust story, and so it was just kind of like, uh, like maybe we didn't need to do that. I don't know. I mean, I hey, get wanting to get revenge on the Nazis, this. but yeah. Anyways, um, so he, so uh what were we talking about before we started talking about oh eric was asking about like in the comics it's just yeah it's a different guy same thing with the movies it's a different guy um every time you know that that so it's like somebody dies and it's a bad thing and so the crow brings them back so that they can get revenge and like in the in the sequel first sequel movie was um his son, the guy and his son get killed because they witness like a gang hit. And so they get killed. And so the guy comes back to avenge his, him, his murder and his son's murder, you know, whatever. Um, Wouldn't it be more fun if they yeah. came back together and they had kind of like a doink and dink kind of thing going on? <laughs> do, do we want to yes. finish talking about this movie yes. before we, uh, we move on to the, uh, I don't really want to move on to the uh, the sequels too much, but yeah, let, yeah. So so he uh, after Fun Boy, it's T Bird, which is again weird because T Bird is the leader, and in the comics, T Bird is in fact the last one to get it. Um, and this is a great and just a, there's a there's a pretty fun car chase. There's a cop who keeps saying "what the crap" multiple times throughout the movie, and. Uh, this is also where we get a great line from skank where he says they can't find fun boy hasn't shown up yet because he's probably still banging away on darla um and then we get a great david patrick kelly moment where he he recognizes uh eric the the, the crow and says uh, this is the really real world man and there ain't no coming back there ain't no coming back man there ain't no coming back and then uh he he, he gets blown up in his prize t-bird um, which is just, I mean, they drove a car off a dock and blew it the fuck up, which is one of those things. Where and, it's just, and, and, he, and he leaves a, a giant flaming crow for no one in particular. That leaves, he, well, he, been, he he leaves a blood a crow in blood after he kills Tintin. But he's assuming that someone's going to have an aerial view and is going to be able to appreciate what he's done. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I admire that hubris, Eric. Well, then the but then the cops show up in a helicopter and they do see it. So there yeah. you go. He, he. I am known for my hubris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. But then also the weird thing about that is like there's a he runs away from the cops like as if they could do anything to him. Like in the next scene, we yeah. see him get shot like seven hundred times, but he runs away from the cops who are shooting at him. Uh, I mean, it probably doesn't. That it probably doesn't feel good, right? Well, that's it. Never, it's never clear. He says "ow" kind of sarcastically when Funboy shoots him, but it's never actually super clear if he is hurt. Like, if it's a Wolverine thing, like yes, it hurts, but I heal from it, or if he doesn't feel pain either. I, it's never made clear. Um, but yeah, he uh, he then goes to find so. Top Dollar calls all his lieutenants and stuff. And so obviously the greed and hubris of a character named Top Dollar is what ultimately leads to his downfall. Because if he just doesn't protect Skank, Eric kills Skank and then he just goes back to his grave and that's the end of the story. Um, you know, it's sort of like um, the reverse get... of that moment in the Terminator where Sarah calls Ginger. Like the Terminator kills Ginger and assumes we think has killed assumes he killed Sarah because he doesn't know what Sarah looks like. And then Sarah calls at that moment and says, Ginger at Sarah, pick up the phone. I mean, she and doesn't, the Terminator knows he doesn't, she, he didn't, but she doesn't Sarah. know that. I guess, I guess he doesn't know that either, but right, he I, doesn't how, did the know crow, either. how did the crow not know that he was the one given orders in the first place? He has all these mystical powers, but he doesn't understand that there was someone know. behind the guys that killed him and his girlfriend. 
I mean, I don't think he cares, really. He only cares about the four people who did it, right? And that's another thing. In the comic, Top Dollar is with them. Doesn't also, seem Top like Dollar a very isn't... satisfying revenge then, you know? I mean, I get, but then it turns into one because he does get I know, but just dollar. by a coincidence. I mean, if he's a mystical, I... mystical murder machine, he, you know... I mean, I guess I don't. Know. I mean, I, I think it's. I'm just saying that you didn't have to write that into the plot, like that weird coincidence thing. It just it adds nothing, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Anyway, what I like about I mean, the I next guess. scene is uh, <laughs> there's this real, very specific period in Hollywood where you can tell a lot of people had seen John Woo movies when a lot of the audience <laughs> hadn't. Uh-huh. And uh, this is maybe the pinnacle. Of the uh, I got like a bad copy of on VHS that my DP let me want to try some of them out. Right, the uh, guns akimbo, you know, as he's, yeah, he's taking he's, on. So, so uh, top, it turns out Top Dollar is so incensed by commercial Devil's Night, they have not kept the devil in Devil's Night, and uh, has, has decided that he's going to make Ultra Super Devil's Night with the rest. Bryce, you're breaking up, brother, a little bit there. Am I back? Yeah, you sound okay now. Okay. Yes, he's he's so pissed about Devil's Night greeting cards that uh, he he wants to uh, light a fire he's so to, big. Yeah, he's literally, he's literally going to burn to the because of it, and uh, and and I arrive in the middle of this with to kill him. Uh, and you it's get a really those... good, uh, 12 year olds fantasy that the bad guy will be just like really into like the trick part of trick or treat and that's their passion yes. like that's that's <laughs> their whole villainy uh-huh. yeah. yeah well so the whole thing about why they were killed is right is because the top dollar owned that building and was trying to evict people so he could keep his slums you know, in his slumlord grasp or whatever, and and Eric and Shelley were trying to fight their eviction and get the other tenants to fight with them, and that's why um, they got offed by T Bird and his crew is because Top Dollar owned that building, and you know that's also why I guess they didn't burn the building because he owns it. He didn't want to burn a building he owns, even though he burned. A, a lot of stuff because I I guess that is actually a thing or used to be actually a thing on Devil's Night in Detroit they that there were like a fair number of fires and arsons um, back in the day I don't know I mean Detroit's not a pleasant place to be now so maybe they still do it I don't know but um, apparently that was a thing at one point um, supposedly so um, but yeah, this whole action sequence is like, this is the big action beat of the thing, right? This is like, we have the money to do this. We're going to do, we're going to sort of build up to this thing where, you know, top dollar calls in all his lieutenants and they try to kill the crow, except he can't be killed. So he just, you know, he's not even really tanking the damage. Cause like, he's not, he's like invincible, but he just. He gets shot a whole bunch of times and kills a whole bunch of dudes uh, while My Life with Thrill Kill Cult plays in the club downstairs. Very annoying yeah. song. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of... I mean, he grabs a sword at one point and starts going to work on dudes with a sword and it's just this big Oh, like in fun... the PlayStation game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, right. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the Master Sword, Alex. I mean, you don't know that. Somebody needed to give those guys one of those boss HM2 uh, distortion boxes so they could have made their guitar <laughs> sound cool. Uh-uh. It turned out to 11, and it sounds like a rusty chainsaw. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, and so after he clears, so then like Skank is the last one there, and I guess in an act of you know, whatever symmetry, symmetrical revenge as he was thrown out the window by Hebert and his gang. He skank is the last one and he throws him out the window and uh, he lands face first on a cop car and then the cops show up and then that that's, I'm, I'm sorry, I was out of order. That's when the chase with the cops takes place. Cops show up and they chase him. I was kind of waiting for it to uh, like, uh, uh, to be the case that the cops were in the pocket of, 
uh, yeah, top dollar top or dollar. something. Like especially yeah, that one detective. Why else was there? I don't know why uh, that scene was in the movie. Otherwise, you know, like yeah, I don't know why he was having that confrontation with uh, Ernie Hudson's character. Because all all action movies with cops needed like police. Yeah, but he Lieutenant wasn't even a, he wasn't even a good ever. angry oh. police chief or anything. No, that's true. He he had nothing on um uh what's that actor who's in Lethal he's in, Weapon and, or yeah, the guy uh, from uh Beverly Last Hills Action Cop. Hero. The guy from Beverly Hills Cop. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. But anyways, uh yeah, some of the, yeah, that's I mean that does seem like you're kinda of, No, there's definitely stuff that was cut from this movie because he because Brandon Lee died. I don't know if any of that stuff is it, like if there was some sort of reveal about that, you know, um, in the in planned like Michael Berryman was in this movie as the, they call him the skull cowboy. Like in the comic, he's basically just like a skeleton in a hat um, <laughs> that like sort of explains things. And I love Michael Berryman and the makeup. Actually, like you can see like you can see the makeup and some of the deleted scenes on the DVD and stuff and like it looks kind of cool, but I actually think that that we talked about, like Bryce said earlier, like I think one of the movie's strengths is that it doesn't explain how all of this shit works. Right. Absolutely. And ha- having, it doesn't Michael waste Berryman... time trying to give explanations for things. Right. Just, yeah. yeah and... You get to have fun watching the crow murder people. Yeah. And having a dude there to be like, okay, here's how, this is why you can do this or whatever. Like, I don't want to hear that. I don't need that. in the... <laughs> And you know, you have like a certain amount, you have like more hit points than a normal person, but you have a finite number of hit points. And that's why blah, 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 or whatever. Like, I don't need that in this Did movie. Somebody just love- get dropped off a cliff, Wiley Coyote style. <laughs> I was going to ask if a Harrier jet just stopped by someone's house. but It's bad. There he goes again. No, no. Someday Bryce is he'll blow drying get- his hair. Someday he'll get that coyote. Um, um, yeah, so. Yeah. Or that Roadrunner. After he throws, so he gets away from the cops with the help of Ernie Hudson, and then he's like all ready to go back to his grave. And Sarah's waiting for him because he didn't say goodbye, which like it's sort of implied that he he won't or he can't say goodbye because he's already dead. Like there's there's there is no good there are no goodbyes. Only bad already, buys. You know that's right. He's already a corpse. And as he's about to just like clamber back in the grave and go back to sleep, um top dollar and his weird sister show up and kidnap Sarah. And so half now he sister, has to go yeah. half this yes, half sister uh, show up. And now he's got to go do more crow things. And this is where, you know, again, we get some stakes kind of here at the very end of the movie where one now Sarah's in danger, which is like, that's the classic superhero thing, right? Like Spider-Man, you know, can't really be fucked with, but if Mary Jane is in trouble or aunt May is in trouble, then like, that's how you get to Spider-Man or, or, you know, whatever. Pepper Potts is in trouble. That's how you get to Iron Man because you can't. Lois really Lane, Tony Superman, Lois et cetera, Lane, Superman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, you know. So that's kind of the that's the trope they pull out here, which is. But then they double down on it by having him giving him a weakness. So it's like someone by making the Lois chicken Lane, the bread. The, huh? Oh God! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How dare you? Well How dare you, sir? How dare you? I, that gets a golf clap right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. Yeah. Yep. I I'll had one here of those once. It was disgusting. It was fucking disgusting. Uh-huh. Sorry, I didn't mean um, to derail you. Yes, you did. <laughs> I don't feel bad okay. about it. But... You know what's as uh-huh. disgusting as a KC double down? What's that? Pro City of Angels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so before we get there, I guess we'll very quickly put a cap on it. So he, he, he climbs up. They're sitting there in a church, of course, because you know goth movies and churches, you know. Um, and there is no Highlander style, like you can't fight on holy ground rule going on here. Um, also, actually, I would put I would put Michael Wincott's top dollar performance. Not, I don't know, I think it's quite on the Clancy Brown as the Kurgan like, level, but it's like yeah. it's in that conversation. You're, I, I agree with the with that assessment that's the uh that's definitely the once again i prefer clancy brown but that's the the, the level it's going for there the... <laughs> um so <laughs> he might stop dollar in the church um the his right his like sidekick shoots the crow so now eric is vulnerable which again like i don't 
necessarily no, feel like you you'll never kill me. That's right. Yeah, watch out. I don't feel like you really need that because the little girl is in trouble, but they go with both. And, um, you know, basically he ends up taking down Top Dollar by he at one point he he touches Ernie Hudson and gets the like the the his whole sitting with Shelly while she died for 30 hours in the ICU like feelings uh, bad vibes as the kids may say these days and so he gives those bad vibes to top dollar all at once 30 hours of pain all at once all for you and he he also falls off the roof and we get a wily e. coyote shot of him as we did with the Eric and we did shot with. Or it is, is. It? yes okay yes. good I'll say that I think that that's a very satisfying villain death. I actually think that that's like, I mean, I don't know if clever is quite the word, but I think that's just different enough that, uh, yeah, I think it's a nice moment. I just don't know that both Skank and Top Dollar had to fall off something tall and get the Alan Rickman diehard. I'm not so much shot. talking about the iron. I'm talking about the, the pain transfer. Yes. Yeah. Than. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, and so he lands on a gargoyle and some very thick stage blood is spit out of the mouth of the gargoyle that he lands on, which is a nice touch. Oh yeah, we did touch like, yeah, that's uh, one of the Brandon Lee's hammier line readings of the yes, Skank is handy you know, or however he <laughs> yes. yeah, does that. Right. Yeah, that's right. He re- really gets some intonation in there. So. Yes, he definitely does. Yeah. Um, and then he just, you know, goes back in the ground and she- and Shelley's ghost shows up and they live dead, but also happily ever after, I guess. And then there's a little monologue from Sarah saying that, you know, if, if we the people we love, blah, 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 love is stronger than death, blah, 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 the end. And yeah, Question I don't know. Mark? Yeah, right. Oh, like I said, it, yeah. uh, I I think it holds up um again i can't i can't discount nostalgia being a factor in that, I, <laughs> I don't think it holds up but i i didn't like it when i saw it back when i was like 17 or whatever and um i think that it it is very much so an artifact of its time i mean like, it, it is of its time and the scenes do show but like but that's why i like it i think right. um like as a more polished movie, a more like timeless movie or whatever would be less interesting, less fun for me to watch right now. And, um, and yeah, I, you know, it has a lot of parallels with the matrix uh, as well. Like the soundtrack and the, like the very, like, yeah, it's kind of boring. Like the matrix. (laughs) Hey, got him. Uh, I I can't, uh, I can't join you there. I can't, can't go with you on that one. We talked, we talked about this already, but like when we talked about the matrix, I no, we didn't because I fell asleep watching the matrix and didn't show up for that episode. So (laughs) yeah. All right. Well, okay. So are you going to, would you like to, would you like five minutes to dog on the matrix? No, I I just, I'm good. That's enough. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I thought the matrix held up really well actually i think i think the consensus of the people who were here was generally that the matrix held up better than we expected it would yeah, yeah it but was, it is also uh, yeah. very much a cultural artifact of its time uh one thing it is, but it's, i since, think it's since we're evidently not doing the news anymore can i just say that the uh matrix board trailer was in my estimate a fucking banger and uh briefly convinced me that white rabbit's actually a good song so so it's got that going for it wow the uh, impossible that... That song is on the is on a list with fucking fortunate son and gimme shelter and that it should never yeah. ever be used and nothing, and uh, nothing, Ram Jam nothing wrong never be used with those songs but we just yeah we don't need to do that again doesn't need we to be used in a movie trailer do ever the again whole, like it's a movie has, trailer hey, it's a song has there been a all... has there been a slow sad version of White Rabbit used in a, a <laughs> video I, game I'm trailer glad yet did not use the slow sad version of White Rabbit you know, uh, one so. one has to imagine that at some point <laughs> yes there was. I don't know. I'm 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 fully going into Matrix rebooted or reloaded or whatever it's called. Resurrection, uh, co- resurrection of course. Re- wasn't resurrection. reloaded the the second one was reloaded. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like now that's not a good movie. That is not no, a good no, movie. Not a good movie. Cautious. It has one good action sequence though. But um, cautious optimism is what I'll say about Matrix Resurrection because I am yeah. not sold yet, but I will watch it. I mean, it's going to be on HBO Max, so similar to Malignant, which I talked to Eric about this on one of our horror game streams this this month, but Malignant was a movie that had me, like, I was, I was about to be completely checked out of that movie, and then the third act just goes so fucking bananas that I was like, nope, I am all the way back in. This is the hey. dumbest shit, and it's awesome. 
And I think Alex would really like, would really like Malignant. I yeah. really did did not enjoy Malignant. Uh, I thought it was it was fucking god awful. My uh, it was it was god awful until it got ridiculous, and then I was like, you know what? I gotta respect James Wan for leaning into how dumb this is so fucking hard that I actually like it. I came around to liking it again by the end. Um, as I said in my Letterboxd review of that movie, uh, it is it is truly this generation's basket case. So wow. this generation's dead silence. I'll give you that. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'll watch the Matrix um, uh, resurrected the on on HBO Max probably. Not Revolution quite, neither. Yeah, I don't know that I can quite get myself to pay for a ticket for that one, but I guess we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, so yeah. The also speaking of sequels that suck ass, uh, the yeah. Crow had some sequels, and boy, they suck ass. So the, um, the only thing that I literally want to say about the uh, about the city of angels like this is the only thing i really even remember from it but i don't know how you cast iggy pop as a character who's clearly based on iggy pop and then have him do a worse job than the guy that they had to cast just because he kind of looked like iggy pop like it's it's very <laughs> strange like i i think it's well i think it's well known that they did try and have iggy pop in the first movie and there was some kind of conflict and like he couldn't do it and that's why they bring him for the second one and he does Worst job playing an Iggy Pop inspired sleazoid gangster. Well, than, so wait, who was Iggy Pop supposed Iggy to be Pop. in the first one? Uh, it was uh, the, the names are blending together, but the, uh, the the one with the long hair, Fun Boy, the, yeah, Fun Stink Boy, Man, yeah, yeah, yes, the one with the, the skinny guy with the heroin addiction, <laughs> right? Yeah, of course, yeah. right? Yeah, right. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. That dude. That I look at that dude and I feel like he looks like. He is he is great value Mickey Dolans, the guy who plays Fun Boy. It's extremely specific, but I'm not going to disagree. So I was going to say, but you can't disagree, right? You no. look at him and you go, yeah, that fucker does look like one of the monkeys, but like the dollar store version. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the I didn't I I feel like at some point I must have seen parts of the other two Crow theatrical sequels, theatrical quote unquote. Maybe one of them might have been straight to video, but. I just remember when I heard about the Edward Furlong Tara Reed one, I was just like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like they were that was really doing reaction. that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Except for Edward Furlong and Tara Reed, apparently. Uh, it's, maybe. That may, it's, 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 <laughs> fun fact: the the that movie's only uh, claim to fame. That's the only other film that has been directed by the uh, director of the not so beloved cult '90s film uh, Six Strings Samurai uh lance oh God. so yeah that's uh that's a lot lot to lot to unpack there so. i feel like there must be people who like that movie somewhere but i don't know who they are yeah six string samurai not not the crow wicked i, guess, I, I think what we're trying to say is that you know when we talk about like cult movie uh culture in the 90s it can it can be easy to get nostalgic about when america actually had a functioning middle budget team, but yeah. i don't know if i would even define that as middle budget but there, there was just a lot of shit out there buying for prominence so yeah. well maybe not maybe not six string samurai but yeah. there were like i feel like there has been much said about the lament of the death of the mid-budget film yeah. and you know it's a bummer um like you know i w i want someone to give you know anyone really like 20 million dollars to make a movie you know oh, and, i agree I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that Crow Wicked Prayer is significantly worse than uh, Six String Samurai, so take that into your evaluations as you will. Um, <laughs> has anyone actually seen the Kirsten Dunst one? Because like I don't think I ever actually did. Tara Reid, excuse me. No, 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 no. There's no. a Kirsten. That, they're oh, not God. the same is there one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, two. it's worse than I thought. They're, they're yeah. different. Yeah, they're not the yeah. same movie. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think. I, I mean, again, I feel like I must. I, I don't know, man. The older I get, the more that I like. I see a movie and I'm like, I don't think I've seen this movie. And then I get like 45 minutes into it and I'm like, oh fuck, I definitely remember that. I've totally seen this movie. Or like yeah. even weirder, I see like a, an old tweet of mine from like 12 years ago and I'm like, fuck, I saw that movie. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, uh, I'm going to see this movie, and I'm like, I don't remember seeing that movie at all, but obviously, apparently I did, because I wouldn't tweet about it if I didn't, hadn't gone to see it, but fuck, man. Well, uh, so that one's currently rocking a 2.2 on Letterboxd, and uh, surprisingly, the director has had a relatively robust career after that, directing both the Dan Stevens, Charles Dickens movie, and Mrs. Pettigrew Lives for a Day. Starring Amy Adams and uh, and uh, Francis McDormand. So, wow. So keep, I, I also keep, I didn't realize. That, so wait, Dan training. Stevens. Dan Stevens plays Charles Dickens. Yep, the man who invented Christmas. So, is that what it's That's called? What it's called. I'm not making any of this up. So, are you sure you're not I'm making? I'm sure I'm not up. making any of this up. Christopher Plummer's in it too. Could you lie okay. to me and tell me that you're making it? <laughs> there you go. What is what kind of score is that sitting at on Letterboxd right now? Uh, I think pretty decent. Give me a second. Uh, 3.2. So a full letter number higher than Crow. Full, yeah, full star Salvation. more than so, Crow yeah. Salvation. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. There's something about... Uh, I, like. I mean, we know how Hollywood is with sequels and, you know, there are certain properties that they just catch on in such a way that Hollywood has to make a sequel. And there are some movies where it works and there are a lot of movies where it just never, like there was lightning in a bottle the first time and that's just it. In fact, I see that the first reviews for Ghostbusters Afterlife are coming out and I am increasingly convinced that the original Ghostbusters is like 1 million percent lightning in a bottle. And there will there's just no way to make another good Ghostbusters movie, so we should maybe just stop trying. I agree. The second one's fine. Yeah, yeah, the second I mean, one's fine. It's sure it's fine. The first one is like an all timer, though, right? Like the first oh, yeah. one is I mean, they're, like yeah. classic, and so like being like the second one is all right. Like that's pretty damning. I haven't seen any either of the other ones, and I probably won't. So I'm good. Good on the Ghostbusters. I don't like the first one's good, but it's also one of those things where people are like, "Oh man, the Ghostbusters is so good." I'm like, "I don't know, dude. That movie's all right. Like, sure, yeah, it's good. Like, I don't have an attachment to it that people like base their entire life around it. You know what I mean?" Well, I don't have that attachment to anything. So, like, right. whenever I'm I see saying, people yeah. like that about literally anything, I'm like, "That's you're fucking kind of weird." Like, <laughs> it's like, you know, right? But it's always just weird. Like, other things I can at least somewhat under like, "Oh, like that's really good." So that's why you like that. It's like Ghostbusters. I'm like, I don't know, man, that. Like, sure. It's I mean, good. I don't know. Like, there's one, apparently one out of four Ghostbusters movies is good. And I mean, people love the shit out of Star Wars and like, what, like three out of fucking yeah, yeah. like 12 of those are, <laughs> are good. I think if I was the type of person who said epic and what and hold my beer and stuff like that in real life, that I would be the kind of person who <laughs> would have that kind of attachment to, uh, ghostbusters because it really was the first movie that i loved and I, there's like pictures of me when i was like six years old uh dressed up as a ghostbuster for halloween and everything yeah but yeah i had a little toy pro pack movie, but... and and all that yes, stuff. Yeah. yeah same um i like that i still like that movie i mean again like there's a point at which you just kind of can't divorce the nostalgia from the quality of the film i mean if the film's total dog shit you kind of can but even then like i still we talked about this years ago but like Eric said it earlier today, like the Stallone dread movie fucking sucks, but like, I have a little tinge of nostalgia for it. So I like, you know, I kind of like it, even though like my, my logical rational brain realizes like this movie fucking sucks, but I still kind of like it anyway. Um, And I, you know, I can't speak to the effect that that has on me for, for this movie or for ghostbusters or for, you know, the later Mel Brooks movies that a lot of people think like are not Mel Brooks. Like I think Mel Brooks himself and a lot of people who like love Mel Brooks think that Spaceballs is total dog shit. Yeah. Um, but I like Spaceballs. Like, yeah, totally. I agree with that, but it's, you know? it's clearly not as good, but it's like, I still think it's fine. It's good. I, I love Spaceballs, but also it was hard to watch last time i tried well, it's oh, okay fair to be fair i have not yeah, watched this watch in a long really a long time so that's possible I, yeah i can't not love it but yeah so i don't know i i think 
I think the legacy of the crow is tied in with Brandon Lee also in a way that it, they're well, almost that, like an yeah, would... and and that's part of why the, the no no follow ups have worked, you know. Well, that's what we was trying to say it earlier at one point, but just stuff kept coming up. But it's like, do you think this movie would have made money if he hadn't died? I don't know if that's true. You know, what uh, I, mean? I mean that that would have made it much. Money I'm glad I'm glad that you're the one who was crass enough to say that because I mean, like honestly, I had like that that thought has definitely run through my brain, right? Like if it wasn't associated with this big tragedy of this, you know, second generation movie star who dies way before his time. You know, does the movie catch on in the same way if yeah. not for that? And I, I mean, it made the movie I don't glorious. know. I yeah. think it would have. And well, I guess, I guess this, uh, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, I mean, obviously he died in production and I don't know uh, when the soundtrack to the movie was built, but the soundtrack to that movie would have sold the movie no matter what, I think. Had yeah, that, I mean, yeah. m- maybe they, you know, maybe the, um, like the the controversy and the intrigue around his death is why they ended up uh, you know investing more in like you know the market gave the music supervisor a huge budget yeah yeah i mean this was also the time when like that style of music yeah you know was i mean obviously like in the mainstream there was also stuff like there was gangster rap was still like quite popular by 94 and, and but like you know in terms of the type of rock and roll that you were hearing on rock stations like the, all these bands were you know stone temple like I, if i remember correctly this that so the song big empty is actually off of purple but i think the soundtrack to this movie came out before purple did so like that was part of the hype too was like oh new, new stone temple pilot song and like that was before everyone gave up on stone temple pilots um you know uh and and you know again like rollins band was pretty popular and pantera was and like, nine inch nails were super rage popular nine machine, inch nails was super huge, popular yeah. oh yeah we didn't even mention the rage against the machine song the first yeah. one we first mentioned it but yeah rage against the machine was super popular so like i yeah you're probably right about that ethan but again we don't know i mean going going back to on, on it and like whether or not this movie's like good it's like i, I think that there are elements of that we like of it because they're slightly kitschy but it's not just kitsch like you know it's like it, it, this to me isn't like just a member berries movie where you just go like oh man remember the crow and then like right. everything else like it's it's like still a fun and entertaining movie to watch in and of itself like i don't like feel like i'm just like watching um, it and giving it a pass it's kind of like, like dark yeah, man but not as much fun Yes, no, I will agree with that. It's a little too uh, like the reason I, I would, wish that the reason I, wish that I don't his like vulnerability it. Vulnerability was introduced at the end of the first act. Yeah, something. Yeah, it just doesn't have a lot of tension, and also it's just like it's a little too serious. It's a little too up its own ass sometimes. Uh, like sometimes it seems like it's making fun of itself, and then sometimes it's very much taking itself very seriously. Like, <laughs> um. I don't like the scenes where he's fucking playing the guitar. It's just. I didn't say that the movie was without kitsch. Yeah. I, I, I never quite Our, did. Uh, but really something. I'm just saying a man cannot live on kitsch alone. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, I think so. The, the one thing I want to say before we wrap this podcast, and forgive me if this has already been talking, but I, I do need to give Joe just a little bit of shit because. Uh, I yeah, was, we could have been was, doing an equilibrium. I was, I, was, I was claiming that <laughs> next uh, month. Next month. I, I, I remember call, saying that Hard Target was gonna gonna be a big uh, big one, and it didn't take off quite as fast <laughs> as the other two. But uh, yeah, but Van Damme is the to our Van success Dam, apparently. Two again, and it is now number two with a fucking bullet by a yep. six to one margin. So yeah. you you doubted the Van Damage, my friend. Yeah, but it's still uh, not it's still not to the level of Time Cop, right? Yeah, not even close. No, nothing ever will. Be. So yeah. none of us will ever do anything as successful as Time Cop, except for Eric. Yes, we who had the Taken video, but, uh, but yeah, we, have we compared those recently? Do we know that the Taken video is doing better? <laughs> I mean, it's got like a hundred and some ten thousand videos or something. I mean, how, like many how many does the? How many does? I have no idea. All right, well, I'm gonna now. I think the engagement time it. with the Taken video might be longer, also. <laughs> <laughs> Time Cop I mean, is at 64,000 views on Time Cop. Yeah, it's got a ways to go yet. 
Can't, can't stop Bam Bam Fever, though. Just brings him yeah. out in droves. Let's see here. And let's see. The top five throat chops in Taken <laughs> is at 100. Well, so it's at 115, but also the Taken video was in 2011 and the Time Cop video was last year. So, I mean, it's outpacing the, the Taken video. Most of by, the, yeah, but I mean, most like most lot. things that you get, you get like a there's a window right and then it slows way down and so that is yes, also slowed way down over true. the course of the last however many months or whatever yeah that's so, absolutely true. anyway i need to go to so, bed yeah same here you should so uh i don't know i think so next time equilibrium yeah uh, which and blade is Blade two double feet <laughs> are there any any video games based on equilibrium not directly, I don't think, but a whole bunch of them are indirectly, or, the, or Equilibrium is indirectly based on... Just play the Matrix video games and no one will notice. <laughs> yeah. right, right. Or play Devil May Cry, I guess. that kind There's of definitely like a Blade were... video game, so I could do that. There's a I few. Guess. Yeah. There's a few. I'm there's, told I that mean, there's definitely a bunch of video games where there's like a gunplay skill tree, you know, yeah, which yeah. is that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I don't, we'll do Blade. We'll give Blade its own time anyways yeah we, we can't yeah. we can't cram blade blade in one and two are worth their own tr 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 trinity needs not apply on this one all right <laughs> i'm gonna shut this shit down all right i'm also gonna do that so good night everybody thanks night for out there hanging out podcast land and we'll Bye. be back next we month played, with we equilibrium. played the crow I will, I will almost certainly not be back for equilibrium but uh you know can't yeah, it's all the time. <laughs> right <He's> intimidated <laughs> i understand <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good night, everybody. <laughs>